Do now number one. Correct your paper as we review. A restaurant sells bagels every five days and donuts every seven days. I'm going to go ahead and annotate. Bagels over five days. Donuts over seven days. If they sold both bagels and donuts today, how much longer until they've both sold until they've sold both again on the same day? So we know bagels are every five days, donuts are every seven days. So let's look at bagels. If they sold them today, they'll sell them again in five days, ten days, fifteen days, twenty, and twenty-five. Now donuts, I'll just put a donuts here. So they sold them uh, today and then seven days from now, 14, 28, 35, 42 days from now, because it's every seven days. And it's saying, what's the earliest they'll be sold again? Well, let's see. We're looking for a number they share, and these are multiples, so it's really asking for the least common multiple of both five and seven. What's the smallest number they'll share of these multiples? Well, I don't see any number they share yet, so maybe I should keep going. I'll look at bagels. I got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, still don't share it, 35. Oh, they share that. So 35 days, they'll sell both. Answer choice is C, 35 days. Number two, when we have an inequality to find the solution, we're going to approach it just like an equation where we do the same thing to the left and the right side. So if I have x plus 4 on the left, the inverse of that, the thing that will cancel that out, will be minus 4 on both sides. x plus 4 minus 4, that becomes 0, so we just have x left over, is greater than 6 minus 4, which is 2. So there's our answer. x needs to be greater than 2. Make your corrections. Number three, in Ms. Sarkar's class, there are 12 girls and 18 boys. That sounds important. She wants to group her students into equal sized groups so that each group only has girls or only boys. What is the largest number of students she can put in each group? So if I'm finding groups, let's see. If I have 12 girls and here's my 18 boys, possible group sizes for girls. I could do one group of 12 two groups of six, or three groups of four. Then for 18, these are the boys, I could do one group of 18, two groups of nine, three groups of six, and that's it. So it says, what's the largest number of students that she can put in each group? Well, this sounds like a lot like the greatest common factor, the largest grouping they each share. Let's find it. They don't share 18, they don't share 12, Hmm, they don't share 9, but look, they both share 6. So we can put 6 students in each group. Again, pause and rewind if you need to. We're going on to example 1. Turn the page now. Example one, we've got some crazy looking shape and it says write a simplified expression for the perimeter of the polygon below. Well, we know perimeter, that is the distance around a shape. So if perimeter is distance, I need to add up all of my sides to figure out what the expression will be. But I've got some variables and some constants, so I need to combine like terms as well. Let's first figure out what we can combine. I'm adding all these up, so I've got 2x, I've got 3x, and that's all my x's. Let's see, now I've got b plus 3, I've got b plus 2, and then I have 2b plus 2. So I've just written out all of the edges all added up, finding the perimeter. Now, it's set a simplified expression, so I've got to find like terms that I can combine. Here I have 2x and 3x. If they have the exact same variable and the exact same exponent, I can combine them. 
So 2x plus 3x, that gives us 5x. I'm going to cross those out because I just used them. Then I see a plus b here, plus b, and plus 2b. Now we know the number in front of a variable, if it's not listed, that's got to be the number 1. So I have 1b, 1b, and 2b. 1b plus 1b, that gives us 2b, plus another 2b would have 4 total b's. Now look at our constants. I see plus 3, plus 2, and plus 2. 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 2 is 7. So after we can combine our terms, I get 5x plus 4b plus 7. You'll notice when I was boxing these numbers, I always box the sign on the operation that's in front of the number. So I said plus 3, plus 2, plus 2. If there had been a minus here, I would also include that in my box. Final answer, 5x plus 4b plus 7. Last example, example 2. Write an expression to represent the area of the rectangle below. Well, I know area of a rectangle is base times height. So let's do that. Area is base. Here I have x minus 4 times my height, which is 3. A couple things to notice. If I ever have an expression like x minus 4, I always put that in parentheses. So when I'm multiplying, I want to multiply the whole base. So this is why x minus 4 is in parentheses. If I have a number outside of my parentheses, what property can I use? Just think to yourself, what property can I use to multiply these two together? If you thought to yourself, distributive property, give yourself an imaginary gold store, star, you're correct. 3 distributes to the parentheses. I have 3 times x, which is 3x, 3 times 4, which is minus 12. So our area is 3x minus 12. Again, pause, rewind if you need to. Your teachers will have all the answer keys so they can check your work. Good luck. Tomorrow's the big day. You're going to rock it.